Mm-hmm. Freddie K. This is a set taken from Stone Techno Music Festival um, this year that takes place, I think, in Essen. I already mentioned before that it's definitely a festival that's on my bucket list, mostly because of the location, because, you know, I haven't been to Essen before. I've only obviously been to Germany and fucking banged that bit out too much. So maybe going to visit other places around Germany would be quite cool. So if I can do that, you know, off the back of a festival, even better. And obviously the the fucking location is fucking beautiful, right? Absolutely fucking beautiful. Um, this industrial sort of location just kind of goes hand in hand with techno music and kind of makes it just look that extra bit banging. Now, for me, the concerning part for me with Freddie K is that I've always been somebody that's kind of been a little bit, I won't say miffed, but I've always kind of been a bit dubious as to Freddie K's appeal. And I think because I guess I've never seen the best version of Freddie K, which is obviously him playing in his hometown in fucking Berlin, or his home city, sorry, uh, where he's based. And um, him obviously doing the closing sets, legendary ones in Bergheim. I've never had the pleasure of listening to him in those sort of settings it's always been through mixes or maybe the time that i saw him playing e1 or whatever but it's never been on his actual home turf doing his thing so maybe i can't be too critical of it but i have to say based on how people talk about him on forums and how he's spoken about on podcasts and shit and based on what i've heard of him so far i'm kind of not getting the hype and i kind of feel like maybe he's purposely made this pivot to playing this faster stuff maybe that's more similar to like hard techno hard trance whatever you're gonna or hard dance music but whatever it is it's very odd because i feel like this set in particular courtesy of stone techno music festival i feel like it sounds the same throughout the entirety of the fucking um mix i'm gonna lower the sound a bit so it's not too high but if you play the fucking mix from like let's play it from like here seven minutes in right i feel like the pace and the bpm doesn't alter or it just gets faster and faster the entire two hours. And it gets faster and faster at the sort of, um, you know, um, negatively affecting the groove and the vibe of it, basically. It doesn't really help it in that respect. Let me play it and let me show you what I mean. Okay, you heard that right. Now, if I skip ahead to like 20, let's do here, 25. It's only gotten quicker now so far for me. Not much difference in tone tonality. Maybe again, maybe I'm bugging out, but maybe just for me. Skip ahead again to 45. It's only got quicker, same shit. Doesn't really feel that different to me. And again, let, let, let this be another thing. Just because you play vinyl doesn't mean you're going to be a better DJ. In my personal opinion. I feel like it's another thing that people do as well. Oh, it's vinyl. But it doesn't matter if you're vinyl. Like, on, I'm somebody that I come from the kind of way of thinking where it doesn't even matter if you can't mix. The actual best DJs out there, I feel like, are the ones that just are able to know what to play. Like, what goes good with what. Like sequencing to me is way more important and having good taste and actual the ability to mix. Don't get me wrong. The ability to mix on top of good sequencing, on top of good taste is fucking phenomenal, right? They, those do exist, right? The Ben UFOs of this world who have impeccable actual technical DJ skills. DVS1 is another good example, but then are actually got good, you know, basis of music to pick from. Um, you know, dig incredibly well, good taste, all uh, well, that shit. But just playing vinyl alone isn't the best thing for me. Anyway, continues on. Now, fast forward again. It's a 50 to an hour. Feels the same to me again still. All right, go again to 20. Still quicker, too fast, for the sake of it. Forward again to 1.30. Now, for me personally, I'm going to go out on a limb and just say, I think Freddie K is overrated, personally for me. 
for how people speak about him and then listen to what he sounds like, I don't think he's that much better than most people out there, personally, for me personally. I don't feel like the music is that incredible that it would justify people flying all the way to fucking Berlin to go see him play a closing set in Berghain. But maybe, to be fair to the guy, maybe when he goes to place festivals, because you're only getting two hour slots, there is no room to go on a journey because I think he's, you know, I think he's, he said it in a joking way, his kind of minimum time that he plays is four hours, maybe even longer than that, right? He wants to play four out, six hour sets longer than that, probably to, to, to you know, come from the, the Bergheim kind of, no, the Berlin sort of education of playing places, right? More longer sets and whatnot. So maybe when he's playing festivals, there's a tendency to kind of only do the bangers. That's the best way to kind of approach these sort of things. Fair, I understand. But it is really interesting when you see somebody play you hear them play and then you think about the people that have been speaking about them online. You're like, hold on, this doesn't really feel like it's what you've been speaking about. And it makes me think sometimes, maybe, maybe this is represent representative of the scene overall. There's a lot of like collective hive mind. There's not a lot of like individual like taste, which maybe makes it interesting why certain people blow up the way they do because everyone just agrees this person's amazing. The one person's another good example is, um, is that DJ called Kelza, Quelza, I don't know if you his name. He's somebody everybody's kind of really hyped on and really on, whatever it may be. But everybody's just saying he's amazing. But then sometimes I look and I think to myself, like, is he actually amazing? Or is it just because everybody kind of agrees this is the next person to kind of jock and be on? But I feel like because I feel like the last I feel like the last person who I feel like justified the scene hype for me was Renee Wise. I heard Renee Wise's name forever and ever. Obviously, I've got a couple of his, you know, productions and records on my fuck in my fucking um record box that I listen to him play out sometimes. But listen to him play out, I was like, okay, cool. Renee Wise definitely does live up to the hype, and he is actually as good or even better than what people say he is, right? And he just, he he definitely is worth getting on a Ryanair flight to go and see him play somewhere, like in Berlin or something. But I feel like the rest of it, everyone just kind of like. They were just lying. I don't know if they're lying. If they just want to appear like they're cool. You want to appear like you're down. So you say Freddie K is many because if you say you like Freddie K, it all it automatically comes with the assumption that you've probably been to Berlin, that you know about underground parties, that you know about his radio show, that you, you know you've seen him on Raw, you've seen he bought his merch, you know he plays only vinyl. It kind of comes with all these kind of um presumptions of you as a person and your taste level by saying you like Freddie K. It's kind of like the opposite of saying you like Nina Kravitz, right? Which is ironic because I feel like sometimes people just hear people's names and get put off of it with, without actually listening to what they actually put out, which isn't to say they're bad or not bad. I don't know. I just, I, just, I just feel like there's not a lot of individual point of views and taste when it comes to this sort of stuff. Everyone just kind of agrees with what's good and what's not good. And um, having listened to this set on Stone Music Festival, Kirsch of Freddie K, I have to be honest, I'm not that impressed. I'm not that impressed, to be fair. And having, again, seen him play in E1 as well, a little bit underwhelming. For me personally, and again, I could be in incorrect here, and maybe Freddie K is going through the same thing that Dax J went for me, because Dax J, for me, was incredible. Then one day I went to go see him, and I was like, who the fuck is this? He sounds like a media lens. Like, he just completely did a 360. And I think that might be part of this thing when you're an up-and-coming DJ. Or sorry, when you're just going, when you're kind of, not up and coming when you're kind of progressing through the scene and industry maybe there is a point where you have to kind of switch up how you play your way you present yourself i don't know to get the big bucks maybe because i remember distinctively being a big fan of dax J and waking up one day going to see him play and then be like oh my god this is not the same person that i fell in love with jeremy you know I this guy's completely different like he's just playing fucking a midi lens level type of play he, he sounds like Charlotte the wit i was like shit um, and maybe that is just what you have to do at some point. You know, you have to kind of progress. You want to get a bit advanced. Like I'm sure Freddie K doesn't want to only be playing in front of sweaty Berliners every day. You want to maybe just, you know, switch it up and become more commercial, maybe get some more money, secure a future for your family, make it worthwhile for you to come out in the first place. If you're going to be carrying around, lugging around all these fucking vinyls, yeah, you know I mean, you need to make it worthwhile so you're not breaking your back for nothing and shit, record, dip, rec record digging and shit. I don't know. Either way, wasn't I impressed by um, the Freddie K set at Stone Music Festival, unfortunately. And I guess I'm eager to go and bloody, um, you know, I'm eager to see what happening development-wise. But see, look at it in the comments. See, it, it, again, that's a, that's a beauty.
That's the beauty of music. It's fucking subjective. Because I said all I have to say. And then Louis Shires here says, I've seen Freddie Kane in NYC before DVS1, and he surprisingly upstaged DVS1, which is saying a lot. So clearly, it's all really depending on your taste level. What you like, what you don't like. But for me, when I saw Freddie K, this set, I wasn't really the biggest fan of it. But I guess maybe um, maybe my tastes have evolved. Maybe um, I'm just not the target demographic. Who knows? Either way, um, that one wasn't the greatest one for me personally. 